Chris Mannix for the crossover alongside Howard Beck and Michael Shapiro. Guys, Steph Curry cracked the 10 straight games of 30 plus points or more this week. Howard, what did we learn about Steph Curry? I think we've learned, if, if we needed to learn this at all, that the guy is an incredible competitor and can carry a team with almost nothing around him. Now, I don't know that we needed to learn any of this. I didn't personally, but there are people out there. There have been Steph Curry critics and Steph Curry bashers, and especially James Harden loyalists who always argued, well, Steph can't do what James Harden can and carry a, a otherwise lackluster roster to the playoffs by himself. Well, Steph Curry is in position to do that right now. And yes, the Warriors are still kind of on the, the edges of that playoff race, but in Steph's 49 games, they're 27 and 22. You put that pace up uh, across the whole season, and they would be the seventh best team in the Western Conference right now. So when Steph is healthy and balling like he is, yeah, he is enough of an engine on his own to carry an otherwise lackluster roster. And let's be clear, this is a very lackluster roster that the Warriors have right now. James Wiseman couldn't even get through the season. Besides that, he was a 19-year-old rookie center who had a ton of on-the-job learning to do. Draymond Green is not an all-star anymore. Andrew Wiggins will never be an all-star. There's really not a whole lot else on this roster to get excited about or lean on, and they are where they are because of one guy, Steph Curry. Yeah, I think this year we're learning just how good of a floor raiser Steph Curry really is. I think in previous years, the Curry detractors or the major Harden stands would constantly say, yeah, Steph is great at raising his ceiling. He's great at playing with great players, but he really can't carry a bad squad. Well, guess what? We're learning that right now. I mean, you look at this Warriors roster around him. It is really rough. There's way too much Kelly Oubre and Ken Bazemore for my liking. James Wiseman was kind of a disaster as a rookie. Draymond Green is a shell of himself, at least offensively. And Curry's going out here and being the same stuff he always was and is. You know, this kind of narrative that he needed a peak Draymond or a Clay or a Durant to shine. Uh, it's always been kind of stupid, but I'm happy that we kind of have this year in a way to show just how absurd that argument really is. Curry is an amazing ceiling raiser. He's a great floor raiser. He's an all-time player. Uh, and any disrespect he's getting, I really think, uh, is some real, real bitterness here. Uh, well, I think what I learned, guys, is that Steph Curry has a lot of good years left in him. I mean, Steph's 33 years old. He's, you know, by chronological age, on the back end of his prime. But watching him play right now, is there any doubt that he can play like this into age 34, 35, 36, or beyond. I mean, shooting is not really a perishable skill. I mean, the best shooters in the NBA, for the most part, were still shooting at a really high level towards the end of their career. So as long as Steph Curry stays healthy, that he doesn't have the ankle injuries that we've seen or knee injuries that can crop up for players later in their career, I think we're going to be able to see him play at an all-star level into his mid to late 30s. And that's a huge boost for Golden State. Howard, we've talked a lot about what is this team's, you know, window. I mean, where, you know, are they, they have two more years left when Klay Thompson comes back, three more years left. Should they trade James Wiseman? I think the play of Steph Curry has shown that maybe that window might be a little wider than we originally thought. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, guards of his size, like 6'3 and under, they don't necessarily age well, and he is 33 and with a lot of miles from all those finals runs. And so it would be reasonable to expect that he could not be doing this right now, much less sustain it going forward. But I think Steph Curry, you know, like LeBron, who's, of course, built much differently, is showing us that in this era, we may have to recalibrate what a guy can do and how long they can prolong their elite years. And it's really important, right? Like, I would have said... Man, don't don't overdo it, Steph. You know, don't Warriors, don't overplay him this year. It's all about next year when Clay's back. But by him doing this and showing what he's still capable of, I do think it gives the Warriors that much more confidence that yes, as long as Clay is back to pretty close to himself and Steph is still playing at an MVP level, not just an all-star level, an MVP type level, they know now they do have a window of at least another couple of years. And I think that that makes the argument that much stronger for still flipping some of those assets and maybe James Wiseman to go get another all-star if you can, because it's all about trying to get back in that championship conversation next season. Man, you are so determined to ship James Wiseman out of town. It's, you know, you're just anti-Wiseman. That's what I'm going to call you, Howard, anti-Wiseman. For more, check us out over at SI.com.